Hello. Uh, I've got another question here for Muslims. Is the Bible corrupted, or is it confirmed by the Quran? When I talk to Muslims, it sounds like they believe that the Bible has been corrupted. But when I read the Quran, it sounds like the Bible has not been corrupted. That it's actually been confirmed by the Quran. That the Quran is a reminder and a confirmation of that which went before it. In other words, the Bible. So, if the Bible is corrupted, how can there be confirmation? You know what I mean? Maybe you can answer me here. But I also have another question for you. If the Bible is corrupted, like I'm hearing a lot of Muslims say, then there are some problems in the Quran to me. Because if you read the Quran, it sounds like the Torah and the Book of Psalms and the Angel, which is the Gospel, are all his words. And according to Quran 6, verse 34, and Quran 6, 115, and Quran 10, verse 64, all his words cannot be changed. In other words, they can't be corrupted. And you think, well, no, the Injil and the Gospel, I mean, the, the Torah, can't be all his words. But if that's true, then we've got another problem here, because the Quran says that if you are in doubt about the Quran, bring another like it. You know? But the Quran says that the Torah is not only like it, like the Quran, but is also both guidance and light. And that the Torah was given by Allah to the Jews to protect. He entrust, that Allah entrusted the Jews to protect the Quran. Meaning that if the Jews corrupted the Torah, excuse me, excuse me, no, excuse me, I got it wrong here. Allah sent the Torah to the Jews to, to protect the Torah. Meaning that if the Jews corrupted the Torah by switching things around and stuff, like the Quran also says, you know, hiding things in it, if that's corrupting the Quran, I think we got a little problem here because I've seen that Quran verse 9 is like the last chapter in the Quran, not the end chapter. It's the only chapter that doesn't have in the name of Allah most compassionate, most merciful. And I was thinking that if the Jews corrupted the Quran, uh, corrupted the Torah, then why did Allah entrust the Jews to protect it? Shouldn't he have known that they would corrupt it then? But then again, if the Torah is corrupted, why is it both guidance and light. And why is it like the Quran? You know? And it seems to me that if the Quran, if the Torah was corrupted before the writing of the Quran, then there would have been an abrogating scripture in the Quran to say, no, 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 no more. No, no, no. The, the Torah is no longer both guidance and light because it's been corrupted. There would have been an abrogating scripture like, say, Quran, verse two, uh, Quran chapter 2, verse 106, which, which calls for abrogation. It says, eh, we can if, cause something to be forgotten, play something that's better with it, you know? You know so there is abrogation in the Quran, thanks to Quran chapter 2, verse 106. Seems to me that if the Torah was corrupted right before or before the writing of the Quran. There would have been an abrogating verse to say, no, 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 it's no longer both guidance and light. It's no longer like the Quran. You know what I mean? But there is nothing like that in the Quran that I can find that says that the, the Torah has been corrupted. You know? And again, if the gospel, the angel, is corrupted, why isn't there an abrogating verse 
in the Quran to say, no, don't stand firm on the on the Quran on the on the on the on the gospel, the Injil. You know why doesn't we why isn't there an abrogating verse to contradict? I mean, to, to abrogate, to substitute the verse in the Quran that tells the Christian he has no ground to stand upon unless he stands firm upon the Injil, which is the gospel. You know what I mean? I mean, if there is ever a need for Quran verse 2, I mean, chapter, verse, uh, Surah 2, verse 1 of 6, it's got to be that one. Because if you read the gospel, it's all about Jesus going to the cross to die for the sins of the world. It's all about blood atonement to get you to heaven, not what the Quran says, which is all about bound to Mecca five times a day every day to escape hell that way. The Quran says Jesus didn't die on the cross, didn't go to the cross, that instead there was a, an imposter put on there to just to make it look like Jesus went to the cross, according to one version of the Quran. So why? Is that scripture not been abrogated by another scripture? Why does it say a Christian has um, no ground to stand upon unless he stands firm upon the angel, which is the gospel? That, to me, should have been abrogated. You know? And yet, it's not. So again, is the Bible corrupted, like the Muslims say, or is it confirmed, like the Quran says? As far as I can tell, the Bible has not been corrupted. It is. But then again, it doesn't seem to be confirmed either. You know what I mean? So, and, yet, and if you have to believe that the Torah, well, hmm, it must have been corrupted after the time of the writing of the Quran. You know, since... Uh, Chapter 2, verse 106 never kicked in to abrogate and say, look, the, Quran, the Torah is no longer both guidance and light here. It's uh, no longer like the Quran, you know. If it was, if it was corrupted after the writing of, of... If the Torah was corrupted after the writing of the Quran, then how do you explain the Dead Sea Scrolls? You know what I mean? If you read the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls and see their meaning, they have the same kind of meaning when translated into English as the English version of the Torah that's in the Bibles that we have today. You know what I mean? So, corrupted or confirmed here? Let me know, okay? Bye.